Mesqua, Kanto Mungo Fellow and Hedgebooker alumna, has been published in various journals and anthologies, including Bearing the Mask, Southwestern Persona Poems, and Dore Guadalupe y Mariche, <coughs> Tijanas in Literature and Art, and The Crafty Poet too. She has won the Austin Poetry Society and Christina Surjit Javna Awards. I always say that incorrectly, I apologize. <laughs> Gloria has also received the 2016 New Voices Award Honor for her picture book, manuscript, and verse, Luz Jimenez, No Ordinary Girl. Welcome, Gloria. I'm so glad that you're here uh, on a beautiful evening. I know it's uh, enticing to be outside. Uh, I'm going to read a couple of poems from uh, Wing Chimes. And uh, the first one is called Brown Paper and String. Mama, who is soap suds and hot water, white sheets flapping, a whirl of broom and a whale of water is a scruffy dog's best hope. Mama, who laughs like sunlight and frowns in photographs, tells old stories to the tune of snapping beans, shakes the rolling pen with her flowery hands, is a stained apron, ripe bananas, hot cornbread, stirs steaming pots fired by dreams. Mama, who is rainwater soft curls, too much powder and tarnished mirrors, a bottomless purse without a catch. It snatches of canciones and her father's speeches, and notebooks scrawled with words she's heard. Is proud of her once tiny waist and small ankles, whose cactus steam shelters mangled fruit, who plants roses but waters the seniors. Mama, who always says my name in English, hides with lost chain in sofa cushions, under coffee rings, beneath keyhole eyes, is a coin dropped in a well with faint echoes from the heart. History wrapped in brown paper and knotted string. And uh, this next one, which I dedicated to a friend of mine's mom, it's called Toothbrushes and Other Essentials. We think we must drag our suitcase memories with us, keep bags and baggage as much as we can shoulder. But we always end up with the contents scattered along the trip. It really only matters that we keep the essentials close to us in the end. The touch of a small hand or a worn one, the melody of joy and laughter, the look in our loved one's eyes. That knowledge, like feathers dipping in sunlight, remains. And I want to read uh, from Entre Guadalupe and Malinchi. Uh, to Annas in Literature and Art. This is an anthology published by UT Press. And actually, we're going to have a reading on Sunday at Resistencia Books uh, at 5 o'clock. So there are some other wonderful readers there as well. This is called Not the Last Pretender. And the epigraph is, What I Cannot Remember, I'll Pretend Instead. I don't remember being Mexican, gathering with La Familia, mom, aunts, and cousins, rolling tamales for Christmas, a house erupting with laughter, and quick hands filling corn shucks. Don't remember altars and tireless saints, hum of prayers, beads threading through worn fingers, or vias de los muertos, sugar skulls and marigold ofrendas. Katrina's bright dresses dripping bones, or sitting at my mother's draping feet, stirring old stories into history, mouthing soft Spanish vowels sliding from other rooms, the ranchetta's rhythmic shuffle and bounce, circling the floor, 
traditional canciones, not even las mañanitas for birthdays. Don't remember fitting in. I just pretend. Let's put these on. Get a little easier. This is from What Remains. Chapter, I know. This is one of the few kind of lighthearted poems that I have. It's called My Man. No fancy frills, no slot of hand, no devil egg. He's a potato salad man. All kinds of good stuff mixed up, fills you up and leaves you feeling all warm and homey, homey like. Won't turn bad on you at a picnic neither. And then this one about my son. The naming of things. I am gathering leaves, examining the outlines, smooth ovals, soft toothed edges, fine veins. Most still green, but the downfall is starting. Trails buried with fragments of ochre, burnt sienna, brown. A rare call in the morning from my son. Unexpectedly, he has called me. The veins are still viable, but his heart, which once beat under mine, sounds hollow. I finger the serrated edges of this unnamed thing, hesitate to enter the dark woods I must search, tread a hard, worn path Go back in deep, reach into brambles, examine each leaf. And then these are some near ones. Uh, this one is called Remembering Windows. In my childhood bedroom, where I slept for years in an old iron hospital bed painted white, up against shiplap walls of dusty blue, where the suffocating heat of summer drought frothed a bath of sweat. Sleeping in my cotton slip, I would lay my sweaty wavelets on my pillow, turning it over and over to coolness, the drone of evening lapping the long night. I would eventually place my pillow on the windowsill, resting my head to catch the oak tree's uneven breath where I trusted the wooden stick to hold the heavy window upright, not to fall, and my hand not to strike the stick, not to turn window into a guillotine. Through the opening, a ripple of breeze licked my face, sighed me to sleep to my tomorrows. But the years fractured trust, shattering an illusionary reflection of a lightless marriage, the cozy family, Swallowing lies like stones, my voice snagged in my throat, unraveling me for decades, trapped behind stuck windows, until I freed the refugee, <coughs> packed the rocks from my belly, one by one, and found the stowaway of an island, and the island was myself. And I have, um, I tend to write a lot about my mom, um, and it's a mixed kind of thing when I write these poems. This one is called Vela Verde, Green Candle. Buy me a green candle to start off the new year, my mom asked, conjuring a ritual for her, one little piece de su mamá funneling through a flame. I know little about my grandmother, the gourd that spilled children onto this crib of earth, then died young. In my childhood, mi abuela was a faint phantom. Mama said she looked like her sister, Tia Cruz, who was tall with high cheekbones. We had no image of my grandmother until decades later, one salvageable photo in a heap of rain damp prints emptied from my grandfather's trunk. A young woman standing with her sister, both in long skirts and upswept pompadour hair. 
Mom buried all that that Sumama had kept them clean and fed, and that she warned my mother not to marry an older man as she had done, of which my mother later did. I yearned for an anchor, a fulcrum, for my place on the carousel. Wishing her memories might rain like confetti, I sought some flicker of the past, but my mother had snuffed out the flame. Questions only scraped a sealed scar. And this one is called a uh, portrait of my mother. It's in the latest uh, diversity for this year. She was the fulcrum in the house and the house revolved around the clockwork of her arms. She was armed for any slight, words to chew for supper. She was supper rather than dinner or lunch, dinner too fancy, lunch too simple except for roles she baked for students in school. She was a school with a leaky roof and a roof that kept out rain. She was tough grass and drought and rain sprouting irises and corn. She was cornbread and molasses, handmade tortillas and sunny fried chicken. She was a flightless chicken, sturdy and sure, and a morning dove searching vacant sky, weathering down she became clear sky, sheltering the house. And you probably noticed that each line had a word repeated in the next line and then it circled back. And this last one that I'm going to read uh, was very hard for me to write. And it's going to be hard for me to read, so bear with me. Blood on the ground. The year my mother sat in a chair, a bag of liquid dripping into her vein on scheduled visits. She smelled of plastic chairs, Lysol floors, old magazines, and warm waiting rooms. I squeezed her cheeks once in frustration at her complaining yet again about her caretaker's bland chicken, the layered dust. My shameful tongue filled with acrid words and a metallic taste rose in my throat as when I first helped mom kill a chicken for us to eat. Her hands grabbed its squawking, its red comb drooping, her strong arms wringing its neck, released it until wings flapping, it flopped white feathers in a dusty heap. A sharp knife, blood spurting on the ground, held by its feet, red draining from veins, sweat dripping, Mom dipped it into hot water, plucked pungent wet feathers as she sat on a plastic seat. I lit old rolled newspaper to burn hairy black pricks on its pimple skin. She cut out the gizzard, heart, and liver, and lifted out intestines oozing in her hand to cut out and dispose. I couldn't eat chicken for at least a year no matter how savory she cooked it, fried or baked in soup or dumplings. Once again, she complained to the doctor about her stomach. She couldn't eat. Endoscopy and colonoscopy had found nothing. High white blood count, the only symptom they had treated. Finally, the test they had not done was run the blue dye finding tumors in her small intestine spread to her uterus and beyond. Knives cut out all they could, but it spread like blood on the ground. Thank you.